Today I'm going to show you how to create some really cool visual effects that you can use with your composites and photographs inside of Photoshop. This video is sponsored by Boris FX, uh, who create optics, which is what we're going to be using alongside Photoshop in this tutorial. And I'll drop a link where you can download a fully functional 15 day trial and try it out for yourself. Let's get started. So we're going to be adding some cool particle effects and different things like that. All right. So first thing I want to do is I want to duplicate the layer. So control J will give me a new layer to work on. I just want to preserve the background because I might need it for other things later. All right. Let's launch optics. We're going to go under filter and under bars effects. We're going to use optics 2022. Okay. And here we are in optics. Why don't we add a little flame coming out of the ball? So if we go into particle illusion, you're going to see there's a number of different filters here. And the one we're going to use for this one is PI, which is particle illusion fire. So why don't we start with that? And you'll see the presets on the left. So I'm going to start with a preset. Now, remember, all of these are 100 percent editable. So they're not like overlays. You know, when you use an overlay, you get one look and that's it. These can be edited in an infinite way. And in fact, we can even create our own um, overlays that we can reuse ourselves. All right. So we've added this fire here. Why don't we reposition it by just dragging our position tool? All right. And I want to modify this a little bit. This is a nice starting place, but it's definitely not where I want to fully end up. So let's just open the tab up a little bit more. And you'll notice that we've got several windows here or several options here. We've got composite, which is how it interacts with the other layers or the other parts of the image. World transform is just basically scaling and manipulating. And in particle properties, this is where we can change all the different things about the particle. So the thing I want to change is the life. And so if you actually take it all the way down, this is where it's born and it's like a brand new flame is starting. And then as it grows out, you can see how it changes. So I like to use this because I can get the shape that I'm looking for. And I'm feeling something like that is definitely a lot more exciting for this ball, like it's on fire. Now I want to rotate a little bit. So we're going to go into world transform and you can see this is where we can scale and rotate. So I'm just going to drag around to change the angle of that. And that's looking pretty good. All right. Why don't we add some smoke behind here? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another layer. So I'm just going to click on the new layers here and this enables me to apply a new effect. So why don't we do smoke this time? So let's go under the PI particle illusion smoke and under the presets, we can see there's a number of different smoke presets. That actually looks pretty neat. So we've got some smoke coming up behind our ball here. That, that's an interesting way of working. OK, what I want to do, though, is I want to take this down. I want to take the smoke underneath the fire. So I'm going to click and drag in the layer. Now, one of the things that's a little bit different about the way optics works and what you might be used to is in Photoshop, when you see a layer on top, you know that's visible. In this case, this is the selected layer. This is the one that's visible. If I click on the fire on top, notice that this is visible. Now, this actually has a, a great advantage because it means you can click on the individual layers to work on them without looking at the other layers. Or if we click on the top, it's going to show all the layers as we work. Now, notice that the smoke is still highlighted in green. That means this is the layer we are editing. If we wanted to edit the fire, we would just click the edit button and now we'll be editing. So remember this little green button here or wherever we are, is what we're viewing and then we can edit any layer. So we're going to be editing this layer underneath while viewing the one on top. All right. So let's have a look at our particle properties, which is our smoke. And let's play around with the life. And we want to increase that or decrease it. Let's get it where it's looking good. Now, if you want to work on this by itself, remember, just click on that particular layer. Let's click the little view and compare. And this enables us to see the layer by itself with the composite as we're working on it. All right. So let's play around with this a little bit. Let's change the size maybe a little. And let's look at the life. Let's take this back a little bit. 
All right, that's looking good. I might reposition it and notice as I'm repositioning on that second window, I can still see what's going on in the first window. To apply this right now into Photoshop. And as we can see, we've added that. So I'm going to duplicate the layer. I'm just going to hit Control J and we're going to work on a duplicate. And this just allows me to go back if I want to. OK, so we can stack multiple effects if we want inside of optics. But in this case, we're going to do them separately. So let's choose the filter and let's continue back into optics again. Now, the first thing it's going to option offer us is to if I click yes, it's going to apply the previous filters. And if I click no, it's just going to let me start again. All right. So this will work well, because what I want to do is maybe put some more kind of interesting things around our person here. Let's go under the sci fi. And if you look under the sci fi, see how we can add these kind of neat little effects like, you know, cool little light effects and, and things like that. You know, and as we can see, we can go through the presets and there's a ton of them. And these can really add something really special uh, to your image. So why don't we do this? Let's go back to the smoke and notice it just replaces the layer we're working on. And let's go for something we saw just a little bit earlier on. These complex vapors, these kind of have a really neat kind of a sci-fi feel to them. So let's go under the particle properties once again. And let's just change the life until we can get them to look. I kind of like that. So it kind of looks like this vapor sort of coming out of them. Now, I'd like to change the color a little bit so we can do that by going to the composite and we can add some tint color if we want. So let's add a little bit of tint color there and see how it gives it a little bit of blue. Now, what if I want to put this out as its own layer inside of Photoshop? Well, check this out. If I go in and I change this from direct to alpha and apply mode, then I apply mode set to none. Notice what we're doing here is we're just rendering this out on a black background. So if we click apply, what it does is it brings it into Photoshop. And then if we change our blend mode from normal to a screen blend mode, look at this, we get it here inside of Photoshop with all of its transparency. I created this effect on a black background. But this version of Optics I'm using, uh, new in 2022, has mask support between Photoshop and Optics. So that means I could save these effects out of Optics with a mask channel, or I could even bring Photoshop masks directly into Optics. I'll drop a link in the description that shows the mask exchange workflow. And this makes it very easy for me to hold down the Alt or the Option key, and I can duplicate it, Control T, Command T, and see how we can just add to that or we can you know just do different things we can stack them we can apply multiple ones and of course we could also do this inside of optics if we wanted to create um, multiple copies of these we could do that too so this is giving us just kind of a cool neat effect let me just um, what I'm doing is I'm just rotating it just to kind of mix it up a little bit now if we want to reuse these what we can do is we can go into the library and we can actually build our own texture library. So all I need to do is drag one of these in to the library and there it is. And I can drag it out at any time. Or I can drag out one that I created previously. And of course, we need to change that blend mode quickly to screen blend mode. And you can start to build up a library of different shapes and, uh, and different sizes and of course we can very quickly change those inside of particle illusion and create different overlays if you want to build an overlay library all right let's go a little bit further here what i'm going to do is i want to put some kind of a texture so i'm going to hit Control j or command j i'm going to duplicate this layer again and then we're going to choose filter and let's go back under the optics again and let's look at some of the textures that are available um, no, we're not going to apply this. We're going to go under, maybe choose the, we can see all these different options we have here. Look at all these different things. Let's choose the grunge. And if we look under the grunge, we can create these kind of cool effects. So once again, you don't need to have the texture packs because these are infinitely um, editable. And so you can build your own texture packs or just 
use them right here inside of optics now the nice thing about these is we can change just about everything so see these colors i'm going to take the black and let's add maybe more of a kind of a brownish tone to it a more kind of an earthy tone and see how that goes click ok and see how that updates the colors i don't quite like that let's go a little bit darker a bit more dense there we go that's getting more like what i'm looking for i'm going to go even denser yet there i kind of like those tones those are looking quite nice so almost everything can be changed and let's um play around a little bit with this density and the stamp there and i think that looks pretty good now you can change the stamp there's so many different things here we could choose you know change that look at that hairline cracks plaster paint spray you know just lots and lots like you can literally create your own textures in here let's go for the garage floor i think this is going to work nicely and i'm going to apply this what i want to do is i want to composite these inside of photoshop so the first thing is i'm going to do is i'm going to change this from normal and we're going to go to luminosity mode so what we're doing is we're dropping this texture on top and let's lower the opacity quite low. So see what I'm doing is I'm just putting a little bit of texture in there. Control J will duplicate that. And let's drag it underneath. I'm going to put this in normal blend mode. And then what we're going to do here is I'm going to duplicate our layer again. And I'm going to hide the bottom layer. And you'll see what I'll do with it in a second. And now we're going to mask this in with the texture. So let's create a mask. Let's grab, grab a black brush. So we've got black, we've got a brush, and we want to set this for large with softness. And let's zoom out. And then what we can do with this large brush is just kind of go around the edges and let some of this texture show through. Looking good. Uh, let's turn the opacity all the way up. So I want to make sure I can get that nice, strong texture. There we go. And then we're going to go in here with white so the x key will flip it and i just want to make sure that we're getting all of our nice particles in here great that looks good now why did i create an additional layer i'll show you exactly why i created this layer now because if we turn on this layer here and then we change that into color blend mode notice how we can keep our colors and see what that's doing is it's letting that texture show through, but we're using the colors above. Now, finally, I just want to clean up this grungy bit. Let's create a layer mask. Hit the X key. So we're working with black. And now I'm just going to go over our hero here and just make sure that he's showing through nicely. All right, let's finish this image off with a nice color look. So what we're going to do is we're going to scroll to the top of the layers panel and then we're going to create a composite layer hold down shift option command that would be shift alt control on windows and the e key and that merges all the layers into a new layer at the top so let's go into filter and we're going to choose virus effects go back into optics and we're not going to apply the previous so this has a really robust set of colorizing tools. So we've got many, many different tools here. We've got diffusion blurs, but we're going to go into the film lab. And this is where there's a number of film stocks and different things. And we're going to look at looks for this particular one. So we're clicking on looks and let's just quickly see the difference that we get. There's the default. There's an eight mil black and white color. And as you can see, we've got these incredible looks that we can get just in a single click that can really dress up your images. So I'm going to show you a little trick on how we can combine some of this with what we've already created. So why don't we do an antique on top and then we're just going to apply this. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to roll back the opacity and bring it up a little bit. So now what we're doing is we're blending that antique look with our original coloring and you can see how that can just add another dimension to your image
So Bars Effects Optics is a great suite of plugins and you can subscribe for $9 a month or $99 a year. If you prefer to just buy it outright, it's $149 and you own it forever. And the nice people at Boris Effects are offering a special 25% discount for the next two weeks. I'll drop a link underneath so you guys can grab that code. And for more training on Boris Effects Optics, check out some of the other tutorials that I've actually done here. And let me know in the comments underneath if you'd like to see me do more tutorials using optics. And if you're new, welcome to Photoshop Cafe. Hit the subscribe button, turn on notifications, you won't miss any of my tutorials. Do me a favor, guys, hit that like button on YouTube, helps with the algorithm. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.